um, so the first one we're gonna make is we're gonna make a radial um, wrist and finger extension orthosis, right? So this is gonna be your dynamic. All right, and this is very specific for, what is this very specific for? This is very specific for a radial palsy. Right, it is. You can use this for a um, zone five, six extensor tendon. Laceration slash repair. Right, laceration is. It's, it, it's give and take, it's really just repair because let's say you're working with your Jerry population and they have arthritis that then cuts their, their extensor tendon, then they might need this type of orthosis. Oh, what's another one? Same pattern, same idea for MP joint replacements. Replacements. Is that a typical surgery? Uh, MP joint replacements? Um, typical? I don't know, but it's going to be for your um, RA patients. It's going to be really an RA patient type of thing. Um, another one might be that it's not joint replacements. It's MP collateral ligament um, reconstruction. Right. So let's say there are collateral ligaments. They're like this is again your RA patient. They have um take pictures. We can take pictures. Um so your RA patients are gonna be your own drift people. Mm -hmm. And when the doctor when the surgeon comes and does the reconstruction, they're going to like pull tight mm -hmm. to pull everything radially. Now there's there's two types of splints for that. You can just sometimes do a static. I call it a static step splint. I'll show you that pattern. Actually, it's a um, step splint. It's actually a one that I use statically quite a bit, but use that use use, use that static base. step. Yeah, it's a step. static step splint. I use that same pattern and turn it into a static progressive. Right? Again, you have the base, but you now can use what you know mm -hmm. to apply and change it based on your need and the purpose of the splint, mm -hmm. right? So this one splint, this one pattern can be used in multiple different ways, multiple different purposes, right? So I'm gonna show you a pattern. You guys ready for this pattern? Right. That's a right <laughs> <laughs> No. I swear it's maybe shaved right here. So it's a little bit less than <laughs> I swear. People are like, I need the patterns. You really don't need the pattern too much. So one of the things I like to do is I, I like to use the paper. Or actually I'll just draw it. So here's a pattern. If you're trying to make a radio splint, you need the splint material to actually be below, sorry, below the MP right here, right? You want to be able to make a fist and come up. So it's got to be below the MP. Now the principle is the length, right? The length has to be, the length here has to be two thirds the length of the, of that of the forearm, right? The length of the if this is your wrist, and this is your wrist, right? Um, it needs to be this long so that there's enough length and lever arm, right? And then this part has to be just uh, 
at the MP uh, joint, at the MP joint, right? Um, if this is the wrist, you want to make sure that the width, the width is, um, how is it called? Half the circumference of the, of the wrist or forearm. If it's too skinny, it will hold. So it's got to come and it's got to wrap around half, right? Half this, so it's got to come around here. It's got to um, here include the thumb a little bit. Are you okay with us doing a video? Oh yeah, we can do it. Jump in on that. Jump, jump in jump on the video action. Some people are you gonna be posting this or saying it? And they don't want you doing any kind of this stuff because obviously no, I don't care. I want, it. I want you get the most out of this program, and I'm, I'm happy. Um, you can take pictures. Mm -hmm. You can, and you can do the same. Say, Huang, you're welcome to share the videos. <laughs> and we'll be taking pictures. So right. So, um, so that's, that's essentially the pattern, right? So if you just think about the base, so the base has to sit a certain way on the arm so that now we can place, because the outriggers have to be placed here, right? This is the, this is the outrigger part and it's got to attach. And we, we include the thumb. You see how we, it has to be wide enough to include the thumb because we also no, need an outrigger for the thumb. Now, that's essentially your radial splint, right? Now, if you were making it and it was just for the hand because it's not a nerve issue, then all you have to do is not make it long, like wide enough for the thumb because you don't need to include the thumb now because the thumb does it so and you're just making it for like a, a, a tendon for the the, the fingers, fingers right does that make sense does that pattern make sense mm -hmm. so here once you have your pattern you have to know how to place it right so placement The principle, my rule of thumb is how can I use, how can I use gravity to help? When I make a splint, I always think how can I make it easy for me <laughs> and my patient. It's got to be first, why me? versus them is because if I don't make it easy for myself, then they're going to suffer me having to make it over and over again. <laughs> right? So even though we are thinking of ourselves, we're actually thinking of ourselves in relation to helping Helping's. your patient. So it's actually really patient first, mm -hmm. but you have to think of you. So the great thing about a radial um, portion of this is that it's the easiest base you're ever going to build because it's just flat on the hand. You need to make sure that the wrist um, is in slight extension. extension. Yep, that's it. So what can you do? You can put a towel roll underneath to place them into a little bit of wrist extension, right? And that's it. And then all you have to do is to patient needs to relax relax people right that's it <laughs> like i know you're a pro at this but uh new, a novice like do you yes. ever like really measure it like like i have exactly 20 degrees or or you just functional uh, face like a little yeah, towel roll just, yeah just a towel just a just a little towel roll okay. right um and if you have them make a fist um they don't have wrist extension so if you do it to the other wrist this is your this is mm -hmm. your visual if you make up this this is this okay. how much your your hand just naturally pops up so what you're doing is you're taking on the natural attitude of the hand the natural attitude of the hand is when the hand makes a fist the wrist goes in slight extension mm -hmm. so if you're trying to replace it and they're making a fist their their natural tendencies of wrist is going to go into extension mm -hmm. as long as the wrist works. So if we're trying to replace wrist extension and finger extension. That's a natural attitude. Mm -hmm. So you're just looking for for natural. I don't 
I don't measure, mm -hmm. and I don't think even as a novice you need to measure. Mm -hmm. I think that you just need to know the the pattern. So um. So if we're if we're measuring, right? If we're measuring, let me borrow your hand, right? So if I measure your hand, I can say okay from MP to two thirds the length of your forearm, mm -hmm. I'm gonna go 10, 10, um, 10 inches, right? I'm gonna give myself a little bit of extra room, 10 and a half, so I can trim mm -hmm. just in case, in case, right? So that's going to be my, my length. And then my width will be, well, I wanna come across the hand. I wanna come to the side of the hand, come across. Uh, to include the, um, the thumb, I'm gonna be safe at five and a half. This is gonna be skinnier, right? So here, so my, what did I do? Oh yeah, my, my length, right? My length, and my width at the hand, at the hand is uh, five, five, and five and a half, right? Now my wrist is going to be skinnier. So here's going to be my trimming, right? My forearm is probably going to be five and a half as well. So I can cut the width of it at five and a half from here and here, right? The width of the forearm. Right? And I'm at five and a half. If I want it to be a little bit safer, I can do uh, 5.75. I wouldn't go to six, it's just too wide. I mean, you're trimming on both sides. And then when you, when you place it on a hand, uh, one thing that I do is, so my rule of thumb is you're gonna, is you're gonna cut your pattern, cut pattern. Sorry. You're gonna measure. Two, you're gonna cut the pattern. Three, you're going to place to get an idea of trimming. You, you want to always trim everything first before you place permanently, like the, your final placement. So you're gonna place for the idea of trimming, you're gonna mark your material and then you're gonna finish trimming. Finish trimming. And then you're going to do your final placement. So let's, let's try it out. Right. So everyone, um, we're going to um, do. Um, so I, I have included in this uh, Taylor Splint and Orafit. Right. Now Taylor Splint is really like I got the thick one, um, and then Orafit I I use a thin one. So for a radial splint, my favorite is to use it a little thin because it has a little give. Mm -hmm. And then I like to use what do you consider for, thin? What is the measurement? So on uh, the, oh, there your cheat sheet has it. Oh, okay. Hey there, are you an occupational therapist and physical therapist that want to do hand therapy? You like videos to help you grow your skills? Well, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. I put out videos weekly so that you can develop your skills and be able to see any kind of patient that comes your way. So hit the subscribe button and I'll see you in the next video.